I've been attending Laverne Heights since the very beginning. Uh, an organizing pastor was sent here, uh, and he contacted known Presbyterians in the area. We began meeting in each other's homes to discuss and pray about the having a church in Laverne, and it happened. We started meeting at Emmanuel Presbyterian Church on A Street in Laverne. Spanish-speaking church. We obviously had our own separate worship services, and we started having Sunday school for our own kids right away, and we had lots of wonderful potlucks with that Spanish-speaking church. And then we went fr from there, we went to Ramona Avenue Christian Church, and we worshiped there for a while before we came on site here. We came when the church was meeting in Ramona Avenue Christian Church. When our family joined with several other families, we doubled the size of the congregation. In 1970, Laird Hall was brought over here in pieces, on trucks, and as it was being set up, much of the work was done by the people here. The people in the church laid cement and raised the walls, and the first service in this church building was a Christmas Eve. One of my fondest memories, because I was involved with the music, was our first service in Laird Hall. We had no heat, and there was no piano or anything, and somebody rounded up a service organ, pump organ. You had to pump the organ with your pedals, and when I started to play the organ, the organ started to move <laughs> because there was nothing there to hold it back. So we ended up having to put that pump organ over against the wall so that it would not move. So I had my back to the congregation for the whole service. This is good old Laird Hall. It came into being around 1970 after being moved from Ontario Chino area to this location. Uh, served us many years as a sanctuary. Originally came with pews, but at one point, to the surprise of many people, uh, the yellow chairs were selected and have been here ever since. We began, got too large for Laird Hall, and the modular unit was brought in that was later dubbed the Cardboard Cathedral. When we first started coming here, we worshiped in what was called the Cardboard Cathedral. It was two large trailers pushed together to make a medium-sized congregational space where we worshiped. And it no longer exists. Uh, it was very kind of temporary and almost sort of rickety, but that uh, held us together until we built the current congregation. One of the worship services, it was raining, and I remember we were moving waste paper baskets all around to catch the rain that was falling. The facilities have changed immensely. <laughs> We had two buildings, this building that I'm speaking in right now, Laird Hall, and then we had um, the portable building, which was our church, our sanctuary, our um, adult ed, um, children's ministry. And then, of course, there was great excitement as we prepared for the, the new building, the, the permanent structure that we have now that was built in 1990. And our first services there were very exciting when we had our first real uh, really worshipful place.
Well, is this great? <laughs> the architect that designed this building did so at our request to include gardens on at least in some element and as a result you see we have two garden areas. You might notice too that they're, the pews are spaced fairly widely apart to make entrance and exit much easier for members of the congregation. Uh, you'll notice the different kinds of stained glass from here in the front as well as at the back and high up. Most of these were uh, dedication windows uh, in memory of different members of the congregation over the years. Well, this is a marvelous day. And uh, what a delight it is for us here at Laverne Heights Church to be sharing it with so many friends and uh, to have uh, members who have moved away back with us. It's great to have you here. It uh, feels like a great family get together. And so we uh, celebrate in, in, in deep and great ways. And we've been worshiping in this sanctuary for about a month now, and I, I still feel like I should pinch myself. It's, uh, for those who've worshiped with us before, you know it's uh, quite a difference from where we've been. And as I told our congregation on the first day we came in, I have uh, this sense that we're on this great vacation. And uh, one of these days, we're going to have to pack up our bags and go back to the Crystal, or not the Crystal Cathedral. <laughs> God help us. <laughs> the cardboard cathedral. The best part of it is when we built the Christian formation. It was absolutely unheard of that the contractor allowed the congregation to work with them. And I just, the meetings that we had in the planning, people were open to ideas and it was amazing. I mean, the end product is very functional, but really beautiful. It matches the sanctuary. The CFC building or Christian Formation Center it was a self-built building built with the hands of the congregation coupled with uh, some contractor expertise and together we were able to complete the structure. And the fact that we as a church built the Christian Formation Center, I think that took such organization, determination, I know it wasn't easy, such skill. Stories still persist today of different activities and events and things that happened during the construction, both fun and not fun. And uh, as a result, uh, the CFC has now served us quite well. We missed the good old cardboard cathedral, but the CFC was a great replacement. I think God puts incredible people in this church with such talent, the, the pastors, the music, the, uh, the preaching ability. It's just, I don't know. I just think it's a very gifted church and I think God had something to do with that. Every one of our pastors has had real skills as a pastor and as a minister. When Vic Pence was the pastor, it was a very small church, as it was under Jack Springer, the founding pastor. And under Vic, a young, very vigorous, very excellent preacher with great ideas and ideas on how the church should grow, the church really did start to grow. Vic's best skill was preaching. In fact, he was here for several years and went on to a bigger church in Yakima, Washington. After uh, Vic, there was a pastor named Mark Fry, and I think his biggest skill, he was a good guy as all of them were, his best skill was administration. He got the administration of the church going in the right direction, was here for a number of years, and, uh, and I think had an excellent pastorate under him. After him was an interim pastor, that was Ron Kernahan, and after Ron Kernahan came uh, a longtime pastor, Steve Metcalf, whom we loved, and it was with us for a long while. I was the pastor here at Laverne Heights for 20 years. Um, we came in the fall of 1993 and resigned in November of 2013. Right? 13, yeah. 14. No, 13. 13. Well, whatever, 20 years from 1993, so yeah, yeah. 
Um, and, and, and what brought us to Laverne Heights, um, I guess you would say um, a couple of things, but the main thing was a sense that this was where God was calling us. I knew it when we went into the sanctuary. Oh. Um, I sat down in the first few, I think it was the first, second, third row in the pews on the right-hand side of the congregation, uh, where the congregation gathers. And I just had this deep sense of, um, of knowing and peace and uh, excitement um, that this place could be could be where God was was calling us and our family and that's that was very crucial um, that I could I had that sense that our our coming would also become a place for our children as well and that was a very big uh, mm -hmm. consideration. Steve was a great human being and I think his best skill was in pastoral relations. He was a wonderful human being. He took care of the congregation very well, called on people when they were sick or hurting and did a wonderful job. Recently, within the last year, uh, we've called Jonathan Hughes, who has turned out to be somebody whom we all love and we think he's gonna have a really wonderful long pastorate too. So I knew them all, they were all skilled in different areas, but I think they all in their own way did a good job. I've been the pastor of Laverne Heights Presbyterian since the end of 2015. I uh, moved here with my family from Riverside, and I think the things that drew us so much to uh, this church were the sense of uh, mutual love for each other, that it was obvious, uh, that it was very genuine, and the different uh, mission involvement, uh, all the different things from Pomona Hope to Providence Children's Home, all the different ways this church is involved. I think this is the healthiest church I've ever been a part of the healthiest church relationally that I've ever been a part of. Whether that's before I went to seminary as the churches I was growing up in or the churches I've served as a pastor, people here really truly do care for each other. They really do love each other. And that's obvious from the first time you show up that the sense of fellowship is very real and sincere and that people want to be there for each other also. The ways that people give of themselves and their time uh, in all those things, God's at work. In all those things, you see you know, God inspiring people and calling people and people responding to that call and getting engaged. And it's fun. The first year we taught, we had the pastor's kids, Mark Fry's kids, right? It's one of the first one years. One of the yeah. first years. And one of the first lessons were, was on Rahab. <laughs> And I thought, wrong. I thought, God has such a sense of humor. How can you teach fourth and fifth graders about Rahab? When a, well, we managed, we muddled through. We did. Um, they didn't fire us. No, no. And I think the years of BBS, we, Patty and I did the, the skits for years. It was, it was one of those relationships where I'd say, hey, Patty, what do you think about this? And she'd go, hey, Linda, what do you think about that? And we'd say, okay, you know, sure. Or, or Linda would say, I've signed us up for something. <laughs> oh, well, that was probably more accurate. <laughs> okay. And that has, you know, that was a gift that has kept on giving. Yeah. <laughs> you did that with her, and now she does that with me. Yeah. And now it's like, I've signed you up for something, Judy. <laughs> and she goes, oh, okay. 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 Yeah. My biggest memories are our times together in youth group, because who could forget? We had the best place ever, which was the Cheney House next door. There was like a ceremonial transition between fifth grade and junior high because you got to go across the, across the way to the Cheney house. It was, it was like a milestone in your life. And so that's, that's one thing I remember is that, that feeling of when you were announced going into junior high in, in church, you got to go across the way to the Cheney house. I think I will remember most the smell of the couches in the Cheney house. <laughs> it, it wasn't a pleasant smell, but it's a nostalgic <laughs> smell in a lot of ways. On one Easter morning, um, I just finished uh, the sermon and we were getting ready to go. I was, whenever I do the benediction, I, I like to pause and think for a moment, just try to discern what's, this is a great privilege to be able to pronounce a blessing upon the people of God. What am I gonna say? So I typically will pause, be quiet for a moment. And so the sanctuary is packed, you know, and kids and adults of all kinds of ages. And then from the background, you hear this little voice from a little child say, let's go. And I thought, that's the benediction. Let's go. It's a place where, we've, where we have, not perfectly again, but we have striven to pay attention to the place that every person has. 
including the children, maybe most especially the children, because it's through their voices that we hear God speaking to us. Uh, when our daughter Elizabeth was 14 years old, she decided that she wanted to be a part of the adult choir. The problem is, is the uh, choir and the youth group met at the same time. So some kids run off and join the circus. She ran off and joined the, the adult choir. And the adults were deeply respectful and um, they brought her in and they were receptive. They indulged a 14 year old making all sorts of 14 year old mistakes. But at one point, uh, Lee and Patricia Gilt uh, noticed that they were driving past our house in Upland. And so they called us and they said, would you like us to pick up Elizabeth? And so it started out just simply as a ride sharing program. They would carpool together. But what they did is that they would take that 15 or 20 minutes going each way and they would listen to Elizabeth. And they would listen to her so much that she felt such a deep connection with it. Well, about a year later, Jeannie was diagnosed with breast cancer. And almost everybody in Elizabeth's life was also affected by Jeannie's breast cancer. But Lee and Patricia were not. And so they became the people that, she, that Elizabeth could process it with. They could, she could talk about it all. And she felt such a deep connection with them. And now here it is years later, when she comes home to visit from living in Seattle, she may or may not see one of her friends from high school, but she always makes a point to see Patricia. It's family. For someone who hasn't ever attended Laverne Heights Church, I would just say that we are a very warm and welcoming congregation. I think we're unique in how we greet people and how we try and get them involved in things going on at the church. I think we're a church that really wants to have Jesus Christ be an integral part of our everyday lives, not just for Sunday worship. We see the love that other people have for our children as a good demonstration of who God is. It's a church that loves children and has committed to them. Many of the children I had when I was here before are now young adults and are volunteers in children's ministry. And that's, that doesn't always happen. It's not just a worship service, it's a worship family. And I think we've all grown in our Christian walk because of our corporate worship. In, in July of, of 2005, I was diagnosed with uh, MS, multiple sclerosis. And um, when we first learned, and th the congregation had, had some sense that there was something not quite right. I was tired a lot and a variety of things. Um, and, and the general consensus was our pastor's burning out, uh, you know, and it's, 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 it's a, it is a chronic condition of pastors at times. Um, I knew I wasn't burning out. I knew that wasn't it. I didn't know what it was uh, until finally the diagnosis came down. We got the diagnosis and, and we didn't tell anybody about the first week or two um, so that we could just kind of live with it ourselves. But then we figured we really need to, to talk to the leadership of the church and to the staff and to others in the church about this. Um, because we don't want to make the assumption that um, they're going to be in the position of having to continue along with us in this relationship if this doesn't fit in the context of their vision for their life together now and in the future. Um, and so we thought we need to meet with the elders and the deacons and the staff and, and uh, what are called the feral pastors. Of, we, we, we're blessed with about a dozen different pastors who who attend our church for all kinds of different reasons, and um, so that they would know. Um, and they could indicate, yes, we want to continue this relationship, or no, we don't. It's that simple. I, we felt that was very important, and that it needed to come from us to initiate it. We didn't want to lay that on them. So, fast forward, we, that meeting was called, we sat down together, we explained what was going on, um, and, and, and why we felt this was important, and then we just waited. And uh, one of the deacons, uh, it was Lynn, stood up and she said, you know, um, I'm a little angry. I thought, uh-oh. Um, I'm angry that, that 
after all that we've kind of been through together these years and thinking through what does it mean to be God's people together, that, that, that you would necessarily think that we were gonna kick you to the curb. Oh, well, I didn't really think they would kick us to the curb, um, but, but she was expressing out of her own love, but also out of her own sense of what she had been learning about the life of what it means to be God's people together, um, that, that that would be contrary to where, who we are and where we've been. Again, it's, it would be contrary to our identity. So I appreciate what Lynn said. And then uh, one of the feral pastors, Larry Bull, stood up and he said this. He said, now, let me get this straight. You have MS, right? I said, yes, Larry, I have MS. He said, all right. All that means then is we have MS. That's Laverne Heights.